Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live in a freezer? What would the world be like inside the freezer? Let us enter a new world. Imagine a world surrounded by ice and snow. Imagine a world where no trees grow. Imagine a world where sun sets every six months. How would it feel like to live in such conditions? Most interestingly, does this kind of place exist on planet Earth? Of course, it does. This kind of place can be found near the poles of the Earth because the North Pole and South Pole are the coldest places on planet Earth. The region near the North Pole is called the Arctic and the South Pole region is known as Antarctica. The polar regions experience a summer temperature that ranges from 3 degrees centigrade to 12 degrees centigrade. While in winter, the temperature drops to minus 34 degrees. This fighting cold at the two regions does not make it suitable for us humans to live there as freely as we live on the other parts of Earth. It is not just the humans. The Arctic and Antarctic also pose a great challenge to the plants and animals for survival. We shall discover why it is not possible for humans to stay at the poles and that shivering cold is not the only problem faced by animals and plants who survive the intense freezing atmosphere. Close to the poles, the weather is coldest and as we move away from the poles, the weather gets milder. As a result of this change in weather, scientists have divided the polar regions into two different biomes, namely Arctic tundra and polar desert. Tundra comes from the Finnish word Tunturia, meaning treeless plain. Welcome! to the chilly and treeless world of Arctic Tundra and Polar Desert. Arctic Tundra is the world's youngest biome. It was formed some 10,000 years ago and is located at latitudes 55 degrees to 70 degrees north. The ground in the far north near the poles is frozen. As a result, trees cannot grow there. Tundra lies in between the region from where trees start to grow to the coast of Arctic Ocean. Spread across northernmost parts of North America, Europe and Asia, Tundra region covers about a tenth of Earth's surface. This is how tundra appears in winter, wild and barren. But as the summer arrives, this frozen solid space explodes with life, giving rise to patch of colorful plants on the surface of the ice. The ice also starts to melt and the melting ice forms various lakes and ponds. The rainfall here is as low as in deserts. The whole region above Tundra is called the Polar Desert. Land here is either barren or covered with a permanent layer of ice that never thaws and the region is too cold for plants and animals of Tundra to survive. Very few animals can survive year-round in Polar Desert and they are also limited to coast so that animals can take food from the ocean in the form of fish. Biting cold mars these regions for survival of any form of life. The only relief comes in the form of summer and that also for a short period of time. The tundra and polar desert 
have far less population than any other biome of planet Earth. In fact, they are the emptiest biome found on planet Earth. About 12,000 years ago, the whole of Canada was covered with ice and a major part of USA was Tundra region. This is Bering Strait, a narrow passage of water flowing between Alaska and Siberia. During Earth's ice age, the sea level fell as water turned to ice. The land between Alaska and Siberia emerged above sea level, forming a land bridge. The land bridge across the Bering Strait allowed animals to walk across. Ancient species of horses and camels wandered west from Alaska to Asia and evolved into zebras of modern day. The Native Americans who were the first to settle in North America, also probably crossed Bering Bridge. Spread throughout Canada and Alaska and North America, today, the animals and people who live here have to endure long, dark, freezing winters at a temperature that can fall as low as minus 50 degrees centigrade. The freezing cold and dry climate at the two poles paves the path for polar biomes to exist. It is interesting to see that snow and ice cover the polar regions at the top and bottom of our planet but not around the middle of the earth. The reason behind this is the movement of earth through space. The Earth travels around the Sun in a giant circle called orbit and takes one year to complete one full round. The Earth also rotates on its own axis and takes one full day to complete one rotation. It stays tilted 22 and a half degrees from the perpendicular plane and 66 and a half degrees from orbital plane as it spins with the poles at top and bottom. Because of this tilt, the poles never receive any direct sunlight. As a result, the sunlight spreads over a wide area at the poles, making the poles freezing cold. The temperature hardly rises above freezing point even in midsummer, and the sun rays at the poles are not so strong to warm our bodies like elsewhere on the earth. Here, there is hardly any liquid fresh water for plants to absorb. Other than snow and ice, another reason that makes survival at the polar region difficult is their unusual pattern of daylight. The North and South Poles experience only one day and one night every year. Each day and each night lasts for six months. The sun stays just above the horizon for six months of the year, circling through the sky once every 24 hours. It gradually sinks lower until it disappears altogether for the next six months. Once the sun has set, the pole is plunged into darkness for half a year and the weather turns bitterly cold. The dark and cold winter lasts from 21st September to 21st March. When it is winter at the North Pole, South Pole experiences summer during the same period. Imagine a rotating top to be our Earth and the bulb next to it as the Sun. As the top spins, its one part of the body is exposed to the bulb, while the other part is in dark. But as we can see, 
the top and bottom part of the spinning top remain at the same place. Now because the earth's axis is slightly tilted, the poles take turn facing the sun or facing away from the sun. This is the reason the poles spend six months in sunlight followed by six months in darkness. The poles are the only place where one can see the sun at midnight. It is obvious to assume that continuous daylight makes the poles a tropical place. But this is not so. The sun here is low in the sky and the snow and ice covering the land act as huge reflectors and reflect away most of the sunlight. Because of this, most of the sun's heat bounces straight back into the space. This makes the polar region chillier than it would be otherwise. Arctic and Antarctic being covered with snow might appear similar. But just as their location on planet Earth, they are poles apart hold two entirely different worlds. Arctic is mostly ocean below its layer of snow and ice, while Antarctica is a gigantic continent. Although the surface of the Arctic Ocean is frozen, the water below keeps moving. Warm ocean currents from the Atlantic Ocean keep the Arctic warmer in winter. The surface ice moves and sometimes splits, producing large stretches of open water. Alaska and Siberia also provide some heat to the Arctic. In contrast to the Arctic, Antarctica is cut off from warm water by a cold ocean current that flows around the continent. It is also far, far away from other masses of land and its surface is much higher than sea level, which makes it even colder. Antarctic ice cap is often colder even than an Arctic winter. If a hole in the Antarctic ice is made and a small fish is brought in open, it would freeze solid in minutes. Antarctica is so dry that some parts are ice-free, including the dry valleys. The dry valleys give the impression of the surface of planet Mars. Because of this, NASA used it as a testing ground for its Viking mission to Mars in the 1970s. One look at the ice and snow at the poles gives an impression of wetness that is spread across the land. But Arctic and Antarctic are among the driest places on Earth. The South Pole receives about 50 mm or 2 inches of snowfall each year. Comparatively, the Arctic is wetter than Antarctica and receives 200 mm or 8 inches of rain and snowfall each year. The tundra tends to retain the water that falls in the form of rain. There are two reasons for this. Underneath the tundra, there is a layer of permanently frozen soil called permafrost through which water cannot seep away. Above the tundra is a layer of cold air. This cold air makes it difficult for the water on the ground to evaporate because air can hold very little moisture when it is cold. Together, the permafrost and the cold air keep water sandwiched inside the tundra and so keep the tundra wet and marshy in summer. During summer, the water trickles across the flat tundra landscape in small streams and rivers 
or it collects in ponds, lakes and marshes. Elsewhere on the earth, on high mountains, the same cold conditions happen just like tundra and are given the name Alpine Tundra. Visiting the Arctic Tundra during summer gives a completely new and different experience from visiting it in the winters. The region is so different in the two seasons that it appears as if we have travelled to two different places. Come summer and the Tundra is a mixture of green, treeless plains, swamps, bogs and lakes. For about two months in summer, the Tundra comes alive with wildlife. Suddenly, mosquitoes, flies, wetland birds, roaming grizzly bears and owls start making their appearance. As winter sets in, the Arctic becomes entirely new world. Ice covers the lakes, rivers and sea. Plants vanish beneath the blanket of ice. Most of the animals head south. Blinding snowstorms blowing across the land can make it almost impossible to see. The melting of ice in summer may be short-lived in Arctic but it is almost non-existent in Antarctica. The land stays frozen solid, even though the sea ice around the continent melts considerably. There is nothing to support life on Antarctica. Only the coastal region can support seabirds and other animals. That also for a brief moment in summer. But as winter starts approaching, these few living beings also start to move far, far away from Antarctica towards north. By the time winter sets in, there is no trace of life on Antarctica. For any life to survive on planet Earth, constant supply of water and sunlight is a must. In contrast to this, the poles are frozen and are engulfed into darkness for months. These polar regions can be drier than the deserts. So, which are the types of life that can dare to survive under such conditions? When it comes to the plants, only the world's toughest plants can survive in this extreme testing environment. The biggest threat to a polar plant is the freezing cold, the darkness, the icy winds and the absence of sheltered places in which to grow. But polar plants have learned to overcome all these problems and have very well adapted to the tough conditions. How do they do it? Well, the stems and leaves of little arctic plants cover themselves in little furry hairs. These hairs trap warmer air around them and save the plant from freezing. One arctic plant has such a thick woolly coat that it is named the woolly lossworth. Summer is a celebration time for the plants here. There are 1700 different plants which include 400 varieties of flowers. The summer may not last long but the days of the summer season are very very long. As summer arrives, plants take full advantage of the long days and flowers as soon as possible start producing seeds before winter sets in. Much of the tundra plants grow sideways and split into new individual plants, making clones of themselves. Winter in Arctic 
is a season of darkness and gloom. In this season, the plants are unable to grow. So the plants have only two options left. Either they try to stay inactive or if they are not able to tolerate the harshness, they die. But before dying, they have set the seeds and the seeds wait patiently for summer to arrive so that they too get an opportunity to flourish. Then they also follow the same cycle. But it is not just the winter cold and darkness that pose a threat to the very existence of these polar plants. They have to survive the onslaught of gale force winds and freezing blizzards. These gale force winds blow away the ordinary plants with their foes, while the freezing blizzards freeze and kill many ordinary plants in minutes. To overcome these dangers, polar plants grow near ground as the wind near the ground is slower and the temperature slightly warmer. Some arctic plants have even learned to turn the wind to their advantage. They use the wind to blow and spread their seeds to far away places. The fallen seeds grow up into full-fledged plants and in this manner the plants increase the chances of survival of their seeds. One famous arctic plant to make use of the wind to its full advantage is the cotton grass. Cotton grass is the famous arctic plant. It has fluffy heads at the top of its stem. The head produces thousands of small seeds. As the wind blows, these seeds swirl into the air and fly far away to grow in new places. In spite of these harsh and cruel conditions, thousands of species of plants flourish in the Arctic region. The Greenland alone has 40 different flowering plants. These surviving plants of Arctic then become a part of the food chain and provide food for the creatures that roam the Arctic region. The plants that provide berries as fruits are the most important plants of the region. Grizzly bears and polar bears are meat eaters. But when there is scarcity of meat, they have no option but to turn vegetarian for their survival. During this period, the berries provide them the necessary nutrition. The vegetarian snack that these bears love to eat is rightly named bearberry. The bearberry is their favorite during the time they are forced to live like a vegetarian. Antarctica has even more severe conditions that allow only two species of flowering plants to exist. These are the Antarctica hair grass and pearl world. Other than these two types of plants, algae, lichens, and mosses also manage to survive. In some places, the rocks and ice of Antarctica turn brilliant red, yellow or green by patches of algae living on the surface. In contrast to Antarctica, and depending on how much water is available, plants form different types of gardens in the tundra. Like in marshy areas, mosses form a layer under other plants, such as grass-like plants called sedges. In less soggy places, small shrubs are common. These shrubs burst with berries in summer and turn orange or red in autumn. Wildflowers such as arctic poppies 
tend to grow in the rocky parts of tundra where it is very dry. Seeing this spectacular display of various colorful plants, we humans too have started copying nature and creating our own gardens in our surroundings. One such spectacular display can be seen in Siberian tundra. The Siberian tundra comes to life each year after the spring thaw as the ground turns into a carpet of mosses, lichens and flowering shrubs. A vast belt is formed and the Siberian tundra stretches across North Siberia in Russia. It starts from the northern edge of the Tega and spreads to the coast of the Arctic Ocean. In the Arctic region, Iceland too has a plant life that is mainly tundra. Iceland is famous for huge glaciers, active volcanoes and geysers and the land is a striking mixture of hot and cold. Even after being vast and supporting fewer lives, tundra is in trouble. In the past, due to the harsh climate of the Arctic tundra, regions of this kind have seen little human activity. Even though they are sometimes rich in natural resources, such as oil and uranium. In recent times, this has begun to change in different parts of the world. The biggest threat is seen coming from oil and gas extraction in Siberia. Scientists are worried. Melting permafrost will increase the flow of rivers into the Arctic Ocean. The extra water would make the ocean less salty and could damage the habitats of many species. The melting could also cause the low-lying Arctic tundra to sink into the sea. Once the poles were untouched and were remote enough to escape the influence of modern world. But the modern era of growing industries and pollution being caused by it are threatening to change the face of polar biomes forever. In the next episode of Arctic Tundra and Polar Desert, we will see the animals that inhabit the poles and find out whether people have ever lived on the poles.